Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab. There's something we haven't done in a while, keeping track of the climate indexes that cover North America. The North Atlantic Oscillation and Arctic Oscillation is negative, which is fairly common during very blocky patterns like what we have right now. Anyway, out there in the Atlantic, we've got Hurricane Kirk. There's a look at Kirk on the infrared satellite imagery, currently 120 knots, making that a Category 4 storm, currently at peak strength. It will very slowly decline through the weekend as it moves north. We've also got Tropical Storm Leslie way out there in the southeastern Atlantic near the Cape Verde Islands. Currently 55 knots, a high-end tropical storm moving west-northwest at 7 miles an hour. But that is showing strong recurvature, and it will strengthen a Category 2. No threat to anyone, and it will not reach the U.S. given the current projections. Okay, that brings us to the weather in our part of the world. We've got this polar air mass across the Great Lakes pushing cool air into much of the Midwest and even into parts of the Southern Plains, although there is a lot of warm air entrenched from Texas all the way up into the High Plains. And as we go north, we hit this strong frontal system currently in Montana, at least that's where the triple point is, and a cold front moving through the Snake River Valley and southeastern Oregon, some very cold air. In the wake of that, temperatures in the 50s all across Washington at this hour. And looking at the weather down south, unsettled in the Gulf Coast region, we have flood advisories this afternoon in the New Orleans area and numerous showers and storms all the way back to Florida. And those will be on the increase. Then we zoom way out and look at the hemispheric weather pattern. This is what is driving everything right now. And this is very valuable to see what's coming down the road in terms of storm systems and polar outbreaks. Now, you probably saw we are in a four wave pattern. That's the broad scale long waves. And let me outline those for you. That's gonna be one wave right there. The other in the Eastern US, another in Europe, and another in Eastern Asia. And in between, there's always ridges. There's one long wave ridge right there in the Central Atlantic, another in the Western US. It's not quite obvious, but you can see how high some of these heights are off of the West Coast. Another ridge out there around the Kamchatka Peninsula, kind of flattening out this area of strong winds, and another ridge through Russia and uh, the stands out there in Central Asia. So that's the picture and superimposed on that some synoptic scale waves like this one here traversing the northwestern U.S. And it's very possible as this wave moves into the long wave trough, it will deepen as it moves eastward. And let's see what happens. There's that trough right there. Then going into the weekend, it moves eastward, gets into the base of that long wave trough. And yeah, it certainly closes off into an upper level low across Quebec. And that brings in some very strong northwesterly flow into the Great Lakes. And a lot of the action is going to be out there in the Pacific off of Alaska. We're going to see some amplification of this pattern in the coming week or so. And here you can see it for yourself. This is sort of a Hovmulder diagram. This is the east-west northern hemisphere, like, uh, let's see, minus 90. This is going to be North America. This is going to be the Pacific, the Atlantic, uh, Europe, and Asia. So it's very valuable to read that bottom scale so you know what you're looking at. And we have the heights right here. Now, I've got a series of lines right here. Those are filtered representations of the actual heights around the mid-latitudes. So what we see here in the Pacific, there's that trough right there. There's the ridge on the west coast. There's the trough descending through Montana and the northern plains. A ridge out ahead of that and troughing in the eastern U.S. and that big ridge right there in Greenland. So if we run this forward through the weekend, you're going to see amplification out there in the western U.S. and the Pacific. And it gets very high amplitude out there going into next week, kind of flattens out, but you can see another wave moving through, really pushing those waves up and down. That means we're going to have some very high amplitude ridges and troughs out there along the West Coast and out in the Pacific, but a very strong ridge holding on. Now, there is 
Let me run this back and I'm going to show you the long waves. If you look at this cyan line right there, I'm going to go all the way back to the very beginning. You can see how there's a broad scale ridge right there in the Atlantic. This appears to retrogress into North America going into next week and into the following weekend. So that's really going to build up that ridge right there on the West Coast. That means probably a continuation of warm weather and maybe a September-like pattern there on the West Coast, but offshore, very stormy. So to me, that means very active in British Columbia as far as storm systems, maybe Seattle, maybe the Pacific Northwest at certain times. But uh, this is going to bring in a lot of momentum into the Western Canadian region, maybe southeastern Alaska. And depending on how much of that reaches the continental uh, northwest part of North America, that could start setting up some snow cover in the Northwest Territories and start bringing down some cold air into the U.S. And this is what we're talking about. Look at British Columbia right here over the next one to two weeks. Just a fire hose of moisture coming in from the Pacific. A little bit of a break there for late next week and then another band. This one has 150 knot flow going into southeastern Alaska. Meanwhile, ridging on the west coast, as we mentioned, some troughs dropping into the central U.S., but for the time being, this is going to be a little bit stagnant across the U.S., although these little sheared-off troughs may generate a little bit of weather going into mid-month. Let's take a look at the tropical picture. At the top right, we see Hurricane Kirk grazing the corner of the map. Trade winds very weak across the Caribbean and the Caribbean islands. Going into next week, we have some formation of some sort of tropical disturbance out there in the Gulf. Now, I did see some indications of maybe some bare clinicity in these systems, so I'm not too sure if these are going to be classic warm core hurricanes and tropical storms. We'll have to see about that. However, by Tuesday, this system will be crossing Florida, and it does have the appearance of an extra tropical system. So probably maybe some sort of front embedded within this stuff. We'll just have to see as we go into next week and still remaining quite unsettled in southern Florida for next week. We're going to be seeing about 7 to 10 inches of rain across much of southern Florida. There could be a risk of flooding. And I think off the top of the right there, that must be Leslie taking a very similar track to Kirk as it exits to the north. A quick look at the weather around different parts of the country, starting with the northeast. We've got that little frontal system across the Allegheny region, bringing some cold air into New York and Pennsylvania. Further to the west, we've got this very classic satellite signature of a quasi-geostrophic disturbance. Let's take a look at the infrared imagery. Because when you look at these upper level systems, you want to be looking at infrared imagery. This shows the structure better. You've got that classic S on the backside. Using the classic vorticity analysis signature, you'd find the shortwave basically in here, or at least the upper trough, and out ahead of it, that's going to be your clouds and precipitation. So that is providing the support to that frontal system there in New York and Pennsylvania. Very surprising to see that upper structure hanging back that far from the surface features. So this is mostly an upper level feature. In the southeastern U.S., well, on infrared imagery, it is a mess. That's because of the extensive debris from the anvil tops, so it does help to switch back to the visible imagery. So this is a convective weather regime. Things show up a little bit better. Easier to differentiate the high cloud right in here from the lower cloud. And we see that most of the region is dominated by those anvil tops, Georgia, Alabama. They're coming from the Gulf right here where we have the mature convective cells. Weaker convection across Florida, but as you go south, it does pick up a little bit there around Fort Myers and Miami. And some more convection along the Appalachians, but it looks a little bit flattened out. Very likely only these elements right here are producing precip at the ground. Looking at the south central U.S., still stuck in a summertime pattern, 80s and 90s all across Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. We're looking for a high of 91 at DFW in Houston, 94 at San Antonio and Tulsa. 
And there's the isotherms if you want to check that out. Yeah, the hottest readings, the uh, thermal ridge axis, basically along Interstate 35. The north central U.S. clearly under the influence of ridging. You can see the anticyclonic appearance to this cirrus in Montana, North Dakota, that outlines the ridge axis, and we transition into northwesterly flow there in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Highs in the 80s across a large swath from Denver to Casper to Rapid City, Billings, Miles City. We're looking for 86 at Billings, and you can see wildfires are a problem in Wyoming. That's going to be the elk fire in the Bighorn Mountains. It's been going on for a week now. 50,000 acres consumed since it started last Friday. US 14 through the Bighorn Mountains is closed. Frontal system on the move there in Montana. We'll circle back to that in just a bit. Let's go to the southwestern U.S. There we have a heat wave. High temperature of 110 expected at Phoenix this afternoon. That's very rare. Until this year, 110 was never seen at Phoenix after September 19th. Well, here we are, another record-breaking year. We've got 103 this afternoon at Tucson, 103 at Las Vegas, and 105 at Barstow. Satellite showing a wildfire in Arizona breaking out. I think they might have made some progress containing that. That's going to be the Mormon Lake fire. They've had problems in that area since Tuesday. Excessive heat warnings all the way back into California. All of the Los Angeles and San Diego area except the coastal cities today Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, excessive heat warning. And that goes all the way up the coastal range into the Bay Area for this weekend. They're looking for temperatures up to 105 in the inland areas there. There's a closer look at the situation right now. We've got 107 at Phoenix, 110 at Needles, and 105 at Barstow, Daggett. The San Joaquin Valley, lots of 100s. We've got 103 there at uh, Merced, 102 at Stockton, and a little bit of marine air making it into the bay area so that's good 77 at san francisco airport the marine layer probably pushing up to san jose right there and we've got mid to upper 90s out to the east and then heading up into the northwestern u.s yeah there's another one of those bear clinic signatures right there let's go over to the infrared imagery and there we see another classic shape right there, the S shape on the backside of that system. So that's going to be the trough in the upper levels. There it is on the 500 millibar chart early this afternoon. It's across Seattle and then this evening moves rapidly into northern Idaho. So that's the appearance and that carries that S shape and that band of clouds into northwestern Montana. And that's a particularly strong trough, and it's really bringing up the pressure gradients. You can see these wildfires breaking out there in the Salmon River Mountains and in southern, well, I think that might be dust coming off of this playa right there in south-central Oregon. Yeah, that's going to be that feature right there. I'm not sure what that is, but that definitely looks like sandy terrain. There's what that area looks like on uh, Street View. This is during, uh, I guess, wet weather, but... Uh, yeah, that's all probably sand being picked up and blown off into the distance. Mountain wave activity, you can see those bands right there perpendicular to the wind flow. So very likely some very rough flying conditions and maybe some altocumulus standing lenticular formations. So around sunset could be some very spectacular photogenic skies around that region. Okay, let's put the maps into motion. And up there in the northwestern U.S., that front is rapidly on the move, sweeping through Montana by 1 to 2 in the morning and reaching the Dakotas by 7 a.m. So that'll be mostly going to the east and not to the southeast. Later during the afternoon, we find that triple point around the Minneapolis area into Wisconsin. So we have that marginal risk for severe weather in northern Wisconsin. Looking for isolated large hail and high winds due to that strong warm air advection, strong bulk shears, but limited instability. That'll be mostly a concern for Green Bay, Ironwood, and Marquette. 
Awful heat wave continues in the southwestern U.S., looking for 109 at Phoenix. Even in California, 86 at Los Angeles and 96 to 102 in the San Joaquin Valley. For Sunday, this frontal system shifts rapidly to the east. You can see the triple point right there around Buffalo, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie. And that's going to put most of the Allegheny region under a marginal risk for severe thunderstorms. Looking for some organization of storms, moderate instability, so maybe a few storms with large hail and high winds. Wet weather all through that area, especially the eastern Great Lakes and eastern Ontario. We start seeing rain problems there in Florida. Fort Myers, Sarasota, Tampa, they will be getting heavy rains. Summer still stuck there in Texas, a little bit of weak or leaf, but this is going to be highly modified air through the northern U.S., but it will bring the temperatures down into the 70s in Kansas and even the 60s in Minnesota. Southwestern heat wave continues there. Phoenix looking for 110 degrees, Yuma 110 and Tucson 103 with 98 to 100 in the San Joaquin Valley. Then we go into Monday. 60s just about everywhere in the northeastern U.S. 70s on the coast, wet in parts of New England. In Florida, extensive rainfall. We're going to see those rainfall totals piling up over five inches in many areas. In the south central U.S., into the southwestern region, the heat continues, but we do knock a few degrees off temperatures in the San Joaquin Valley, looking for 94 to 97 there. The northern plains begins warming up once again, but around the Great Lakes, 60s and 70s. Going into Tuesday, Continued cool in the northeastern U.S., 50s and 60s with 70s on the coast. Summer continues down south. Temperatures fall to 106 at Phoenix, 104 at Yuma, San Joaquin Valley cooling off to the lower 90s. Rain chances picking up there in Washington. And it continues quite wet there in Florida for midweek. Then we go into the remainder of the week, just a very stagnant weather pattern. More storm systems in the northwestern U.S. making their way across the very same areas. This one will come a little bit further south for next weekend. That will bring some very cool weather to parts of the central plains and some definite upslope flow. Easterly winds crossing that frontal boundary into New Mexico, into the Panhandles, and producing some heavy rains there in New Mexico. So we will revisit that for next week, and hopefully some more of this cold air will make it further south and put an end to this heat wave. And you probably heard the entire state of Texas woken up at 4.30 in the morning because of a misused police alert in the Panhandles. I'm kind of curious if you all have issues with this in your state. We've had this happen here in Texas several times. So a lot of people very short on sleep today. That's what's going on here. Obviously not much going on with the weather. And that concludes our weather cast for Friday. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll be back again on Monday for the Patreon supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. And we'll probably have a little bit more weather to look at. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.